Good morning, good morning. Hope everyone is doing well. Let everybody get logged on here. It's a Wednesday morning in June, and we are um, kicking off uh, another uh, couple verses in Ephesians. So, so glad that y'all are joining me this morning. Um, again, I'm filling in for Pastor as he is working on his doctoral work, and um, glad to do so. And we are um, in Ephesians 4, verse 14 today. So, um, I was I was thinking about this hymn this morning. Um, I just encourage you this morning, whatever you're doing, um, we have a story um, because of him. He's written our story, and uh, I want to encourage you with this good hymn. Blessed is sure Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, an heir of salvation, purchase of So good to be with you on this Wednesday morning in June. 
Um, we are in Ephesians this week. Well, we've been in Ephesians uh, for, for a bit here. Um, but we are in chapter 4, verses 14. And uh, just in kind of a recap of what we talked about, um, really what today is, today is kind of the more of a ceiling of the first 13 verses. So, so Paul here is writing, he's encouraging the church. All of this is based on unity and maturity in the body of Christ. Um, our actions towards one another and also our actions towards people outside the body of Christ. Um, starting in verse 2, he's encouraging us again to be humble and gentle and patient uh, with one and not only one another, but also with um, with those that we're around by giving them grace, um, allowing ourselves to be um, to to extend grace where grace is due. Because if we if we don't, um, we're not necessarily showing the love of Christ. And I mentioned on Monday, tolerance is something. Uh, the tolerance was mentioned in the NSAB version, but it's not a tolerance of sin. It's it's a tolerance to a point of saying, I'm going to love you out of a, an extension of grace. Um, then he goes on to um, continue and talking about certain People are equipped for certain works. Certain people are called to certain things, whether they're uh, a p preacher or a teacher. Um, but each person has been given a gift um, according to what he's been called. And then we hop in today in verse 14. And this is kind of the summation uh, until we, and then. Uh, well, tomorrow we'll hop into verse 17, but this is a summation of kind of what we've been looking at since Monday. This is verse 14. Uh, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ, from him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. I'm also going to read um, in the New American Standard um, in verse 14, if I can get to it. Uh, this is the NSAB. Uh, as a result, we are no longer to be children, tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causing the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Um, so there's, there's even a lot in this, but it's so good because we've, We've been, Paul's been setting it up and we've been looking at these uh, verses through Monday and Tuesday. And here we pick up as a result, we're no longer to be children. So there's an aspect of maturity that um, those things being patient and humble and kind and gracious to, to one another, not only in the body, but outside of the body, um, showing love in Christ, not again, not again looking over sin or past sin, but, but, but being correcting in love and extending grace, as a result of that, we are no longer to be children. And we're not to be tossed by waves and carried by the winds of doctrine. Uh, lately, I've seen, so. I mean, and this is pretty, this pretty streamlined Christianity, but, but, but Paul, is, Paul is continually saying, guard your faith, guard your doctrine, beware. Um, it's, it's so important, Paul, and I think Paul was surrounded by so many people that um, were trying to, insert their own doctrine they were trying to to check and it was so important to paul because of what he what he carried and what he bore for the church so um as a result we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried by every wind of doctrine but we know exactly the doctrine that we follow uh, we're not fooled by trickery of men by craftiness and deceitful scheming and then but again he goes back to but speaking the truth in love we are to grow up in all aspects in him who is the head, even 
even Christ, for whom the whole body being fitted and held together by every joint supplies. And here even talking about uh, the importance of the body and what role you play in the body. Um, so if you're extending grace and you're, you're following the instruction that was given in verses 1 through 13, uh, you're, you know your calling, you know where you fit in the role, and then here you are is in a part of the body, you know your doctrine, and how do you fit? And I would encourage you today, um, maybe today you don't feel like you've got a place. Um, you do have a place. You've been called and there's a spot for you. But maybe you don't feel like you're serving in that area or you're giving in that area. Maybe you don't feel like you're leading. And I would encourage you to seek that out with the Lord. Where is it, God, that you might have me so that I might play an important role in the body? Whether what um, I love how it says that these joints are held together. And if there wasn't a joint, the body wouldn't fully be held together. And the imagery that's painted here by Paul. So I, there's there's a place and a, and a time for you. I was meeting with the XYZ ministry uh, about two weeks ago, and I encouraged even them the importance of their their life they might have extra years of zest and they might be in the latter years of of their life however their life's not over there's still time and there's still time for them and i would even say to those um young people i would say to you uh quit quit following the world's ways um quit being swayed um my my generation is the least committal generation. Uh, you can't nail us down. You can't um, you can't tell us, hey, come. You know, it's hard to get people together. Um, and so, in my generation, as we're a part of the body, it's so important for us to be committal. Um, so, again, I would just encourage you. Um, I would encourage you today, if you don't know your place in the body. Um, if you don't know your place outside of discipling and encouraging and loving, if there's a specific thing that you can find your spot in, I encourage you to pray and ask God to show that to you. Um, but this is so good. I, I love I love how Paul wraps it up here. Uh, and if there's one takeaway, I would say we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine. Um, I think that's so important. If we don't know, if we don't know what we're preaching, if we don't know what we're talking about, if we don't know, we we don't have a leg to stand on. We don't have a leg to fight on. Um, so I just wanted to encourage you in that. We'll be picking up. This is kind of a new segment, still in the same chapter in verse seventeen. Tomorrow, wrapping up my week with y'all. Tomorrow, it's been so good to be with you. Uh, again, keep praying for Pastor. He is um, again in in his doctoral work and um, studying and growing. So y'all continue to pray for him. I want to pray for you this morning and I will, um, I will see you guys in the morning. Let's pray. Lord, I'm so thankful for your scripture. I'm thankful that it does not return back to us void. God, I, I pray Lord for myself. God, God remind me of my calling and my purpose in ministry. Remind me where I need to be better, where I need to extend grace, where I need to extend humility, where I need to um, to love out of love and grace. Show uh, show those things to people that are around me, so that I might be mature in the faith, so that I might have a good understanding of your scripture and understanding of your doctrine. God, I pray, Lord, that you would help each person that is listening, uh, from from young to old, God to find their place in the church and in the body. God, if they don't already have a place, God, I pray, Lord, you would encourage their heart and their mind, even today on a Wednesday, um, in the middle of the week. Um, you're getting through that part of the week, Lord, where, where we're looking towards the weekend. And for some, for some one that might be watching, just to get through the week is is hard enough right now. I think of um, I think of some families that are that are hurting right now. Um, God, just to get through Wednesday might be something that that they're even struggling to do. So God, I just want to pray that you would help help those that are in need today. God, extend your hand of love and grace and mercy to them. 
And uh, God, I pray a sweet blessing over uh, those that are watching. May you just bless their day. May their day be, uh, may their day be wonderful and um, full of opportunities to share your love and faithfulness with others. God, I love you and I praise you for who you are and thank you for your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, hope you have a wonderful uh, Wednesday and I'll see you tomorrow.